And uh, we are pleased to be joined by Trail Blazers assistant coach Jay Triano, who's joining us from Los Angeles tonight as the Blazers do gear up for game two coming up on Wednesday night. Coach, thanks for the time. Uh, one win or one loss doesn't mean much. It's the first to four wins. But what is the biggest adjustment that you guys as a staff are looking at in anticipation of game two? Well, I think number one, we have to be able to be a little bit uh, more aggressive with our coverage is on Chris Paul. Uh, I thought he controlled the game very well for them. Uh, I thought defensively they did a pretty good job of you know, taking Damian and CJ uh, out of the mix as far as double teaming them as much as they could uh, when they came off ball screen. So we're looking at different ways today and watching film with the players to uh, see how we can, you know, maybe free those, free, free our best players up and maybe stop their best player. You talk about watching film today. Uh, one of the things that we found out right away was, you know, from watching the game was Maurice Harkless, who usually starts off games with a great deal of energy and is productive, but foul trouble really kind of put you guys in a little bit of a pickle last night. Um, what kind of trickle down effect did that have uh, in the course of the outcome of the game? Well, it, you know, that, he is a big part of what we've been doing in our success of late. I think, you know, him getting in foul trouble kind of changed our rotation uh, as far as when we had to start you know, making substitutes and whether now we wanted to continue to stay small against the bigger team and spread them out or uh, try to match up big with them. So it just changed our whole strategy right away. And I thought Mo had gotten off to a great start and uh, brought us a lot of juice. We know if they're going to play J.J. Redick on him, we want to take advantage of him in the post, and we were able to do that on a couple of occasions. Uh, so, you know, that hurt us. But at, at the same time, you know, we think that we're deep enough to have enough different you know, thoughts as far as going big or going small against them. And, and, and uh, you know, for the most part of the night, we, we, we stayed small but had to play big at times. And, and their, their size and their physical strength inside hurt us. So, you know, we're looking at a variety of different things, uh, whether it's uh, trying to play maybe two bigs at once or, or, or mix things up and, um, you know, stay small and just make shots because uh, we thought we, watching the tape, that we had a bunch of shots that, uh, we make those shots. It changes their philosophy on how hard and how aggressive they can try to trap our two best players. You know, Coach, it's amazing how making shots changes so many things in terms of how you feel <laughs> uh, about a game in victory or defeat. Coach, when you have uh, a number of practices between games in a playoff series like this, do you make all of the adjustments in the first practice and give it to the team, or do you give it to them incrementally over the course of a couple of practices? Uh, that's a great question, and, and we debated that. Uh, we decided uh, uh, today to uh, just look at last night's game and, and analyze it a little bit with the players. Uh, our meeting tonight and tomorrow is going to be more about how are we going to make uh, adjustments and what are the adjustments we're going to make. Do we want to make 15? Do we want to make two or three? And I think, uh, you know, you don't want to overload the players. We're really pleased with the fact that we put in a couple sets that they hadn't seen and we're effective scoring with those. So we might tinker with adding a few more sets uh, to kind of exploit their aggressive defense. Um, but, um, you know, we're going to do most of our technical adjustments in our practice tomorrow and then review them again uh, during our shoot around on Wednesday. You know, Coach, when you have a team uh, that is largely inexperienced in terms of playoffs, you know, and you lose a game by 20 points, is there a need with pros to – to kind of remind them that it's still just one loss, uh, or is there no need to address margin of loss or margin of victory? Well, I mean, that, that's a, a, another good good point. I mean, we we talked about it, and our players, I, we thought we were a little bit tight. Uh, we, you could tell by some of our free throws, um, and you know, missing free throws, missing open shots, uh, our anxiety level, but. You know, if you if you play great and lose at the buzzer, you're in the same position that we are right now, uh, where you're down one game. And it, this isn't about one game right now. This is about four games. And uh, I think that uh, our lack of experience compared to the Clippers mm -hmm. is something that will be gone as the as the uh, series progresses. Um, our guys, you know, even in the second half, we thought we were a little bit better than we were in the first half, uh, as far as our execution offensively and our ability to to, to score. Uh, having only scored 42 points in the first half. 
Blazers assistant coach Jay Triano joining us from L.A. Coach, last night it felt like we saw everything that the Clippers can throw for you over the course of a series. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they're dangerous in the pick and roll. They created some matchup problems. Um, that said, I thought that the team was really given a pretty big boost when we saw Chris Kamen come out there on the floor, and that gave you guys a little bit of an advantage. Um, just a hunch, but probably going to see a little bit more of uh, the big caveman, Chris Kamen. Yeah, um, you know, Again, we coach the game at like it was a, like it's a series as well, and we want to find out if Chris is going to be a guy that can go in with their size and girth and size and help us hold hold them off the boards a little bit, um, be a little bit more of a playmaker in the window uh, when they when they're trapping Damian and CJ, and, and Chris is pretty good with his decision making and his ability to shoot the ball. So, you know, that was something we tinkered with during the game, and we thought, you know, hey, it, it worked it worked well. Uh, the other thing is, you know, if they're going to trap, Chris was up near the center court line uh, making traps, and that takes they, they, their big and, and one of their guards, you know, that much further away from the basket. So uh, his experience, you know, showed a little bit in the game, and it's something that, uh, you know, we're going to rely on hopefully as, as the season goes or as the series goes on. You know, Coach, obviously in a playoff series, you know, from a fan standpoint, we get to see a little bit more of gamesmanship or chess moves, whether it's intentional mm -hmm. fouling or, or in-game adjustments. But there was a little bit of barking in game one with the Clippers, <laughs> uh, that, that emotionalism, that edgy competitiveness. From a coaching staff standpoint, do you address that? <laughs> it's hard. It's hard to address it, um, you know, with the players and tell them to not, you know, talk when we as a staff dislike the Clippers as much as the players do. I mean, it's just – Oh, you know, no. and, and we, we, we have to be very careful as a staff, and we, we are. Uh, but it seems like to me that they're, you know, it, it, it's a team that uh, going back to the preseason this year, uh, there, were, there were a couple incidents in, in games going back to the CJ being left off the list. It, it's just, you know, it's just one of those teams that uh, we play so many times because of the preseason and because they're, you know, in the Western Conference and we see them and uh, they're good. And that, and that makes you, like, take a step up to try to beat them. So it's a team that nobody really likes, and we, we feel a lot of, you know, pressure in trying to beat them and find ways to beat them. They are as frustra Are they as frustrating to coach against as they are to watch? I mean, this is just – it's uh, – it, honestly, I mean, we, and yeah. we have – I, I think mean, it goes – it goes it goes top to bottom from their broadcasters uh, <laughs> right on. I mean, and as coaches, as coaches, I mean, we're watching, you know, we're watching all the games, and sometimes you get their feed, and um, you know, just the comments that were made in the preseason are things that yeah. kind of get your skin up again. And to be a competitor, I, you so, sometimes want that, and sometimes can use that to uh, help motivate a little bit. Co <laughs> Coach, I can't tell you how much I appreciate your transparency <laughs> yeah. uh, in this conversation. <laughs> Because, I mean, I watch you, and I'm in close proximity to you a lot, and, and you're a pretty cool customer. So for, yeah. for you to kind of unpack this in this playoff series, I just want to say I appreciate it. <laughs> no, no, it. It is the playoffs, and it's, uh, if this doesn't bring up the highest level of competitor in you, uh, something's wrong with you. And I think that, you know, our, our guys are relishing this right now, and even as a staff, we're, we we appreciate, the, you know, the, com the competitive nature of our sport and you know, trying to find a way to win and whatever can motivate you over 82 and now into the playoffs is, is, is important. Assistant Coach Jay Triano joining us from Los Angeles. Adam Bjarnson, and Michael Holton with you on Trailblazers Courtside. Coach, um, we talked about this in our first segment, that the Trailblazers have been a pretty resilient team all season long. So the general mood after the game yesterday, uh, still positive, obviously, uh, upbeat. What was it like at practice today? Did the guys just want to get right back out there and get back to work? Yeah, I wouldn't. Well, I wouldn't say it was it was upbeat. I think it was a, uh, it was um, more like, hey, we're okay, and, uh, and like you said, resiliency. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that, you know, what they were they came into our meeting today and wanted to know, okay, what what what, what do we have? What do we what do we need to do? What can we do? Um, you know, and I think that you know, Coach Stotts opened it up to them. He said, what do you think about this, you guys? What do you think about this? And players were locked in again. So. Again, we've said all along, this has been one of the best groups to coach. These, these, these kids are, like, fun to coach. They'll, they'll listen to what we say. They're, they'll, they'll, uh, they'll provide uh, ideas if they have them. They's not afraid. You know, and then that, that's a tribute to Coach Dots, who has, uh, um, you know, been very open to suggestions from both coaches 
and and players um and to to try new things and you know we've got to hey we've got our work cut out for us this is a great team that we're playing against you know they were top five offensively and top five defensively and we're going to have to be really really good uh to beat them you know coach uh lastly i just want to ask you right quick it's been said a lot i don't know whether i agree that the game slows down in the playoffs and 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 you got to be able to execute in the half court but I do want to ask you about playing ahead of the defense uh, because they shot 53%, so it's hard to play ahead of the defense. But is it important for the Trailblazers just to find a way to play ahead of the Clipper defense getting set? It, it is. I mean, and, and I think that uh, throughout the course of a series, you're going to see different games. Some some are going to be a little bit more wide open. Uh, we watching a, lot, a bunch of the games, uh, even as we're watching them tonight around the league, you know, they're low scoring right now. I mean, it, it's uh, – it's a grind. It's, it's, it's more of a grind, and, and teams are really locked in on every possession defensively, so you've got to be super good at how you execute. Uh, at the same time, if your defense can be good and you can get deflections and rebounds, you can steal a few fast break points, and, and that's, still, that's been our philosophy all year, and we're going to try to keep doing that. Jay Triano joining us from Los Angeles. Coach, I wish you guys all the success this Wednesday. A split uh, would be a serious advantage as you guys come home for games three and four. Thanks for the time tonight. My pleasure. Thank you, guys.